Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve word problems uh, with trigonome trigonometry using bearings. So the main important thing different with bearings is they're going to be angles that are a little bit different than the standard, uh, standard definition of an angle. And just to kind of do a quick little review, remember when we had standard uh, form of an angle, we always started in the, po uh, the initial side was in the positive x-axis, and rotating that angle counterclockwise was positive rotating it clockwise would have been negative. Well, when we're dealing with angles that are in bearings, we're basically going to have a compass heading, north, east, south, west. And we're going to start from due north, and angles rotated um, clockwise are now going to be positive. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do bearings, which I'll work with both of them. Um, see, in this case, you can see that my bearings is like, you usually start with north or south, and then it says how many degree direction um, in going east or west. So that's another way to represent bearings. But when we're dealing, again, we're dealing with word problems that are using trigonometry. So regardless if we're using bearings or if it's some other made up uh, kind of word problem, we still need to create right triangles. Because if we're using trigonometry, we can only apply our trigonometric functions on right triangles. So to understand where those right triangles are going to be, the best thing is to take our information and draw a picture. All right. So in this, in this example, it has a boat travels at a speed of 40 knots from port on a bearing of 65 degrees. So the first thing I want to do is represent my bearing of 65 degrees. So I'm going to have north, east, south, west. Here's my first dot, which I'll call P for port. And I'm going to be going at 65 degrees. So I'm just going to represent, actually 65 degrees is probably something like this. So I'm going to represent 65 degrees right here. All right, now we are traveling um, that for two hours, and you're going 40 knots. So knots is going to be your nautical miles per hour. So if you're going 40 nautical miles per hour and you go for two hours, that means you have traveled 80 nautical miles. So I'm just going to kind of write that in there right here, 80 nautical miles. Actually, let's just do NM. Uh, let's just do 80 is going to represent my distance. And then I'm going to change course at 155 degrees. Now, when you're changing course, again, that's a new bearing, right? So let's actually get a little bit farther out. That's a new bearing. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another north, east, south, west. So from due north, here's 90, here's 80. So 155 is going to be somewhere like this. OK? Now, um, let's kind of see what exactly these angles are. If this is 65, that means that uh, if this from here to here is 65 degrees, that means from here to here has to be 65 degrees. If from here to here is 155 degrees, um, then therefore that's going to be short of um, halfway, halfway, a straight angle is going to be 180. So therefore, you could say that this angle is going to be 25 degrees. Now, this is very important because if I take a look at 65 plus 25, that's going to give me 90, which is a right angle. That's very, very important that I came across that because if I didn't have a 90 degree angle, I couldn't apply my trigonometric functions, at least as the way that we've learned so far in this unit. I'd have to use um, you know, law of sines or law of cosines, which we'll get into. But in this case, I can show now that I have a right angle. And then I've traveled again at, let's see, I'm changing direction. So I'm still going 40 knots, but I'm going to do that for 40 hours. So 40 knots, so that's going to be 1,600 nautical miles. Now let's kind of go into what the question is. So what the question is asking is, how far is the ship from the port? And what is the bearing back to the port? So basically, they're asking us for how long is this length? Right? And then also, what is that bearing? What is this angle from due north all the way to there? All right? So we know from here to here is 65 degrees. Um, and then if we know from here to here is 65 degrees, from here to here then has to be the rest of that to 90, which is going to be uh, 25 degrees. That means all we need to figure out then is what is this. So basically, it's going to be the uh, larger angle minus, or whatever that angle is, minus 25 degrees. Okay, so whatever this angle is, minus the 25 degrees will get us that angle. So first, now, first things first, though, let's go and figure out what this, the length is. And if you guys can see, we have this right triangle, right? And what we have here is on this right triangle, we have 80 and 1,600. And guys, if we have a right triangle and you have the two legs and you're trying to find the hypotenuse, all we have to do is use Pythagorean theorem and we can find that. So we do you know, 80 squared 
plus 1600 squared equals c squared. And then we just take the square root here, and we can go ahead and solve. So c equals the square root of, let's go ahead and figure this out. So that's going to be 80 squared plus 1600 squared of 256,000, no, I'm sorry, 2,566,400, and square root of that answer. And I get C is equal to 161 point, uh, actually I'm going to round to the nearest nautical mile, so 1,602, so nautical miles. All right, now let's go and figure out this angle. So when figuring out the angle here, um, I have, so let's say, let's see, what did we know? We have 95 degrees. I need to figure out, sorry about that. This angle is what I'm trying to figure out, right? So let's call this theta. So from this angle, I have the, that, if that's, this side is the hypotenuse, I have the opposite or the adjacent. So I can say the tangent of theta is equal to 1600 over 80. Well, that means theta equals tangent inverse of 1600 over 80. So let's go and figure out what that is. So again, make sure also when you're doing your calculator, not we're doing angles, make sure that your mode is in degree mode because we're now finding the angles and we're looking for angles and degrees. So I'm gonna do 1600 divided by 80. It's gonna be 20, obviously. And inverse tangent of that answer is gonna be 87.13. Now again, I'm gonna round to the nearest degree. I don't think I've mentioned that in my writing these out here. So I'm gonna say from here to here, or from there to there, is 87 degrees. But we're looking for what this angle is. Um, actually, well, actually, I don't even need to know that. Um, because I need to know what is the angle back to port. Let's see here, actually, I'm sorry. Here I am right there. So I need to know if this is 87, I'm sorry, I'm, I was thinking about the wrong one. I don't need to know this angle. That's gonna be my bearing. I need to know the bearing back to port. So let's uh, counteract this. Let's uh, redo this, my apologies. I got thinking on the same traction. I need to figure out what this angle is from here to there, right? So um, I could figure out, well actually all this information is, did, is all right because if I know if these two lines are parallel lines, right? These two lines are parallel. That means that angle is the same as this angle right here. So let's do 87 minus 25, and that is going to give me uh, 62. Okay, so that's going to be 62 degrees. So what that's telling me is this angle right here is 62 degrees. So if this is 62 degrees, that means this must be 62 degrees. Right, 25, yeah, I guess my, my angle really isn't drawn very well, um, but therefore that's gonna be 62, then that means, if that's 62, then that means that's 62, and then all the way around the circle is going to be 275. So from here we have 90, 180, 270, and therefore I just do 270, plus 62 degrees, and I'm at 332. So therefore, I have a bearing of 332 degrees. Therefore, from due north, I'm gonna have to go 332 degrees is gonna take me back to my port. And obviously, we know 360 would take, you know, 360 is gonna take you all the way back to due north. My graph isn't drawn that well, because actually, if you think about this, this 1600 is gonna be going way, way, way down there. So it actually would look like it's uh, getting up to that point. So my graph is a little rough, and I apologize for that. Um, however, the mathematics at, at my point uh, looks pretty good for me. You could also go ahead and, no, that's exactly, yeah, that would be my exact way I wanted it. All right, let's go and get to this one, because this one uses bearings in a different direction. This one says a, tra a plane travels 25 miles from an airport at north 42 degrees west. So what that's saying is you're going to be traveling from due north 42 degrees west. So due north, 42 degrees west. So that angle right there is 42 degrees. Okay, now the pilot turns the plane 90 degrees clockwise, um, counterclockwise, and travels 18 miles on a bearing of south 48 degrees west. So they're kind of already telling us now that they're creating a right triangle, and, but they're saying this is going south 
48 degrees west. And we kind of know that that is going to be, um, uh, let's see, south 48 degrees west. Do, do, do. Yeah, it's because we know because alternate interior angles, um, we know that if that's 42, then that means that one has to be 42 degrees, right? And therefore, they're going to make, uh, again, they're going to make a 90 degree angle. Um, how, hard, how far has the plane traveled and what is the bearing back to the airport? So again, we need to find that bearing. Now, a couple things that we're looking for is, again, they're looking for what is this length. Now, the first thing is we traveled 18 miles. 18 miles in this direction. And I'm sorry, plane travels 25 miles here. So let's actually just redraw this triangle here. So I have a right triangle. Of this right triangle, I know that, uh, actually, I don't know any of the angles except for the 90 degrees. But I know that this is 25 miles. And then this one is going to be 18 miles. Okay? So again, I can have enough information now to use the Pythagorean theorem. So basically, I'll just do, um, I'll say this is my c. So I'll say c equals the square root of 18 squared plus 25 squared. So let's kind of go into our calculator here. Do 18 squared plus 25 squared, square root, second answer. And uh, rounding it to the nearest mile, I'm going to get 31 miles. So c equals 31 miles. Okay, so therefore, if I travel 25 miles you know, in my northwest direction, and then I travel 18 miles in my southwest direction, um, I am going to be 31 miles away from my port, which sounds relatively about the same. And that was one thing, actually, I forgot to mention at the beginning, is make sure your answers kind of make sense, right? If you travel that distance, you should be about 31 miles away. That makes about sense. If you travel 80 this way and then 1,600 you know, far this way, you're probably going to be around you know, 1,602 nautical miles away home. Like that kind of makes, um, you know, that's roughly around makes sense. Um, in the same regard as you're bearing that angle, that makes sense as far as where we should be um, in the relative scope of everything. Um, all right, now, now we got to figure out this bearing. Now the bearing, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to try to go from due north or from due south. So. I need to figure out you know, some of my angles here in this case. Uh, anything that technically that I could use would be very helpful. So if I know this is 48 degrees, again, by using uh, alternate interior angles, I know that this is also going to be 48 degrees. And if I go ahead and add the 48 degrees, and then I add this angle, um, so therefore, I can figure out what this angle is. Then I can subtract them from 180 to give me that angle. And then that angle I could use for as far as my south do so and forth. Or you could do it from due north and do so forth. So I'm going to actually show you both of those in a second. But either way, we need to figure out what theta is. So the representation of theta is going to be the tangent of theta is equal to, again, here's your hypotenuse. So this would be my opposite, and that's my adjacent, 25 over 18. So theta equals tangent inverse of 25 over 18. All right, so what I'll do is I'll do 25 divided by 18. Tangent inverse of that answer is going to be 54 degrees. Now, again, I'm going to round this to the nearest degree. So that's giving me 54 degrees. Now, what I could do is I could add those two up, and I could give my first answer in terms of bearings from due north. So therefore, I could say north, so due north, 48 plus uh, 54 which is going to be 90, which is going to be, that's 90, so that's going to be 102, 102 degrees due east. Or what I could do is I could subtract that from 180, which would be uh, 78. And therefore, that means this would be 78 degrees. And I could say the bearing, oh, crap, I got to forget. I keep on doing this. This angle is from here, so therefore, I don't know why I keep on doing this. I got to remember, here's where you're at, right? We got to figure out what is the bearing to go back. That's what we want to figure out. What is the bearing to go back? So, um, hmm. What am I doing? That's not even, uh, that's to go back. So we got to figure this out. I keep on, I keep on making a mistake on the exact same thing. Um, let's see here. So if that's 54 degrees, I know that is going to be 48. So if that's 48, then that's 48. Um, 
So that means this is 42. So this whole angle, uh, this whole angle is going to be 48 degrees. But we need to figure out what is it minus that portion. Um, so if that's 78, that means this whole thing, actually, hold on. We could use it here. You could have used trigonometry to figure out what this angle is. But if I know from here to here is 78 degrees, by using parallel lines again, I know that from here to here is 78 degrees. So therefore, 78 minus 90 um, is going to give me what this angle is right here, which is going to be 12 degrees. That's very important because I can now do north 78 degrees west. So you could do north 78 degrees west. Um, or actually, that's going to be preferred. I mean, you could also do south and then do 90. Do south 90 degrees plus 102, which would be 102 degrees west, which actually would have been the exact same which we would have got. But that is from your final position going back to your original airport to get back to there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve word problems with bearings. Thanks.